next clip we're going to talk about is um uh, shabuzi another fantano clip talking about shabuzi and why his smash hit song is so popular so what he's got to say Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. Let's talk about one of the most interesting chart phenomenons uh, that has happened this year. That would be this uh, new Shibuzi single, A Bar Song tipsy now if you're not already familiar with singer songwriter rapper shibuzi you should be not just because uh, this new track of his has spent multiple multiple weeks at number one right now but also because he had a very nice placement on that uh, new beyonce album cowboy carter and also he's currently one of these artists who is just seeing such a big cultural boost at the moment due to the fact that both country and hip-hop are sort of like bad absolutely i don't even remember the last time i've or the first time that I had heard of Shibuzi, but it was definitely on Instagram and it might've been like an IG ad, honestly, like, I'll just remember seeing it, his music and it sounds like, oh, it's cool. It's kind of like urban country and he's kind of trying to like blend the lines, but more so on the traditional, more traditional sounding countryside than let's say a little Nas X. And it was cool. And it was like, all right, I just thought I was like just another one of those artists popping up. And then I checked back like not even a year later and like he's on Beyonce's album he's trending all over the place trending on youtube i see his songs getting played on reels and shorts and tiktoks all the time it's just like oh okay like when did this happen i think i agree with fantano here where it's kind of like this unique point in time where country music is having this resurgence to the degree that like it's breaking through to the mainstream more because they are using more elements of like pop and hip hop and just more modern mainstream sounds. And it's like, it's having this moment. And then he just came at like this perfect storm and perfect time. And like, look at him now. Been on the absolutely like jet pack to the top right now. And it's kind of crazy. Battling right now for what is going to be the next cultural zeitgeist for the next 10 years. It does slowly look like country is uh, going to be taking over, but regardless of what direction that goes in, uh, Shibuzi is going to benefit either way. Now, the guy has three albums under his belt at this point, including his latest. And that's what's crazy. Like all the like Chaperone, Sabrina Carpenter, even Shibuzi, like they're having their absolute moments right now and popping up and, and popping out and like really like putting their stamp on the game and having their 15, 20 hour minutes of fame, however you want to say. But like the reason also why they are so successful when they have popped and like popped off the degree that they have is because they have this absolutely incredible like back history of music and experience and like cultivating their sound and finding their identity like they didn't blow up immediately like it took them years to get here and like finally when they got their recognition the reason that they can hit the ground so hard and like keep putting out like dope song after dope song and like really like establish who they are is because they've already done it they have a back catalog and they use those years to build their experience and like become like the artist that you see today it's kind of the Russ model where like it took him a long time to pop, but when he did, like he was very polished. He was so polished and ready for the moment that he wasn't just going to disappear. And that's, I think the direction that like artists like Shibuzi and Chaperone and like um, Sabrina Carpenter are going to be taking because like, yes, they are popping off. They are going incredibly viral, but they've been at it so long that they are extremely polished by now latest which just dropped this year he's clearly a talent with a look an image a style and also a very solid voice too but also like when have you ever seen like a country artist with long ass dreadlocks like that like he is playing like that perfect role and like kind of shifting the image of what country can be which is always like a very good thing is a somebody who can come in and like shake things up is always going to stand out and he's always got that going for him. But I wanted to talk for a quick second about why exactly I think this song has been standing so firmly at number one for so long with no sign of it dropping off the charts anytime soon. I mean, this track's place on the charts is so solid, it essentially even blocked the Lady Gaga and Bruno Mars cut from hitting number one. I mean, this song is still holding strong, even with numerous tracks from the Post Malone album, which just dropped and commercially has been very successful. Uh, nipping at its heels.
feels. So far at the time of me shooting this video, uh, this track has been on the charts for 19 whole weeks, and seven of those weeks have been at the number one spot, which is why I have essentially listed five reasons why I think this track is doing as well commercially as it is. Now, most are- Hold on, what did I say? as it is. Now, most or maybe all of these reasons might be a pretty obvious read, but I still think they all culminate into a, a winning recipe for a number one song uh, in the current pop music paradigm. First reason being that country music is huge at the moment, and historically speaking, on the pop charts, Americans love a country crossover. Essentially a country song that can appeal so widely it's even hitting with non-country fans. Which I know historically to be true because I came up uh, during the 90s when, you know, you had your achy breaky heart, friends in low places, your Garth Brooks, your Billy Ray Cyrus, so on and so forth. No matter what walk of life you come from, Americans typically can all kind of uh, convene around a hooting, hollering, catchy, energetic country song, and this track most certainly is that. The number two reason why I think this track is doing as well as it is at number one is uh, if there's another thing Americans love, it, it's a goddamn drinking song. Maybe if you're this is facts. This is why country music is so popular at bars, especially when you go out nowadays, you're always going to hear some version of some kind of more poppy country song because I mean, out of anybody, they do talk about drinking and having a good time and just kind of doing the American pastime more than a lot of genres out there like that just resonates no matter what, even if you are a country music fan or not, they just hit those vibes that people vibe with and he tapped directly into that especially a younger listener that might seem a little alien to you on the pop charts these days because as streaming has become like the primary mode through which people experience music uh, a lot of the stories and narratives and vibes uh, that are conveyed through popular music uh, tend to be a lot more kind of low-key and individualized whereas pop music that tends to be centered around a party atmosphere the club its presence in the mainstream is not as great as it was in like the 2000s when Max, two Thousands are just absolutely full of straight up club bangers and dance songs and just feel good music. It's something that I've always talked about and something that I think is absolutely missing from the mainstream nowadays, especially like concerning hip hop, which is my genre that I love the most, is that like there's not a lot of fun, just straight up fun hip hop songs out there. Songs that you can just dance to, drink to, have a good time with and, and be with your friends with without having to like think about this deeper emotional or violent undertone like you can just have fun to it. And like that has been missing from this day and age. I think kind of hit the nail on the head in that in terms of why that fun sound, fun music is not around is because of streaming, because your experience, like he said, is very much like isolated at home to yourself on a personal level. So I can see why that music would resonate, but like other songs, like more fun, dancey, poppy, have good time music doesn't because you're not out and about for the most part experienced in this music for the first time or resonating on that same level as it did like he said in the 2000s which was absolutely full of just straight up feel good songs and straight up bangers there's a reason why when you go to like throwback nights nowadays like 90s and 2000s have the dance floors going the craziest I remember it to be where DJs and whether or not a particular track would go over well in the club uh, were, were kind of a pretty key gateway in terms of like whether or not a track did well on the radio, on the charts. Did people want to hear this song when they were out having a good time with their friends? And it feels like right now in what many perceive to be like a post-COVID era where uh, everyone can go out again and have a good time and start socializing more. And yes, of course, drinking. We need exactly a song exactly in anthem for just that occasion and Shibuzi's track here fills that exact void perfectly and also reminds listeners of an era when music with that vibe and with that style was more prominent and prevalent and popular given that the track interpolates one of the most classic club rap bangers of all time jayquan's tipsy which brings me to my third reason that this track is doing honestly literally like that is the perfect drinking have a good time song like i don't care like you play that song at any point in time anywhere you're out and about it's gonna have people moving it's gonna have people having a good time because it hits that absolutely specific feel that you're looking for when you're out and that's a rarity these days
so well that uh, given its genre crossover that it's got bringing to the table here, it has a little something for everybody. While Shibuzi has recorded his fair share of just straight up country songs, he also has quite a few songs that blend elements of hip hop and country, and it has enough of each mixed into it to where I feel like listeners or fans of each genre can get into what he's presenting here. Because you do have what are essentially two of the most American institutions in all of popular music melding together for a pretty catchy song that once again is all about carefree vibes, fun, getting wasted, and not thinking too much about anything all that heavy with a, a very repeatable one, two, three, four chorus. The fourth reason that I think this track is doing so well, I think has to do with a previous very successful single on the Billboard Hot 100. In fact, the longest running number one single of all time, that would be Lil Nas X's Old Town Road, which I'm kind of surprised isn't being brought up more in the context of this track. Probably because he feels like a lot more authentic than like Lil Nas X. Lil Nas X was basically shit posting with that song. Like it was something that he didn't even expect to go as big as he did. And just something that he was kind of playing around with and almost trolling with. Like this is very different in terms of that because Shibuzi is a country artist. Like you mentioned, he does have a lot of very country traditional leaning songs that, but he also can kind of cross over and mix in. So he is a country artist first and foremost that maybe crosses over and brings in other elements of like hip hop and pop. Whereas Lil Nas X was a straight up kind of pop artist who was just messing around and fucked around and made a country hit. That's the difference. Not that I think they're exactly the same aesthetically as Shibuzi's track over here, vibes wise is just a wee bit more country. And not that I'm implying either that Lil Nas X and Shibuzi are similar types of artists, as Montero was pretty quick to dive much further into pop and rock music. See, and like he just straight up ditched that country. Like it's not like he did a country song and then was like, oh, this is my lane now. Like he's like, oh, that was cool. Let me show you what else what I'm really, really into. And it was just all straight up kind of pop bangers and hip hop too, uh, since, uh, you know, having released more singles and even a full length project still with all that being said though, uh, Shibuzi is currently just like fast track running down a path that was previously just uh, cut out for him to do so with that other very long running rap country crossover. Even if they are very different songs from different artists, the ways in which they are the same, I think are what makes them so commercially viable. And then we have the number five reason that I think this track is doing well, and that's because of its attitude, because of how outlandish the interpolation is and the country rap combination is, there is kind of an element of like novelty fun to it. Like it's a seriously enjoyable song, but simultaneously you don't need to take it too seriously as it doesn't really seem like it's taking itself all that seriously too. Which again, I mentioned multiple times now, but it's something that is a problem I find in a lot of music these days is that they take themselves entirely too too serious. I think the reason why Chapel Rowan and Shibuzi and Sabrina Carpenter are resonating so much these days because they are having fun. Like they're just straight up having fun with their music. And like while they might touch on some of those same more serious aspects as like other artists, they do it in a manner that is much more fun and enjoyable and not so emotional as we have been getting over the past at least five to ten years. Like it's just a breath of fresh air that people are out there just having fun in music again. And I think that's why it's resonating so much because after such a like tumultuous period as we have been in with COVID and everything else that has been around that time, it's like people want to have fun. People want to enjoy their music. People want to like be able to just feel good about themselves and like not everything be so heavy and emotional and dark and like brooding. It's like that is why they are resonating because it is so different than what we have been getting. And hopefully we start to get more fun, wholesome, feel good music in the future because we need a good balance. Because again, I mean, really a rap country crossover that uh, invokes Jaquan's tipsy. It, it just kind of seems like we're playing musical Mad Libs in a way. The concept from the outset is just absolutely ridiculous, but the end result just happened to be complete fire commercially. But there you go. In my view, those are the top five reasons why I think this Shibuzi track is doing so well on the charts right now and uh, has no signs again of it dropping uh, off of the Hot 100 anytime soon Let and i'm out here talking about how like popular and big it is like in bars and out and about and like i've never actually heard the song in full not once
Not one time I ever heard the whole song. I just heard snips. So I feel like we should just go ahead and watch the whole song. It's at 118 million views. Yeah, yeah. He got a hit on his hands for sure. Again, just like off the back, like his look again, like absolutely giant wicks or dreads or however you want to call them wearing like this kind of very down South country outfit, obviously in front of a saloon, like very Western all Americana. Like it's got this vibe to it that you just would not kind of expect to hear from an artist that's presenting as he does. And like right off the back that grabs your attention and he stands out just off of that alone. And like a country singer talk about my baby wants a Burke. And it's like, come on, like, it's just genius. It's low key genius. Like that's not something that you would expect from a more country leaning song, but like it, it works. It works. It's also just like, again, he mentioned it, how like absolutely genius it is that he's interpolating like Jaquan's tipsy into this song it's because it's like everybody recognizes that it's immediately recognizable, regardless if you are a country hip hop pop fan. That song was such a smash, massive hit and part of people's like upbringings that like they're going to immediately recognize what he's saying and like those lyrics and like immediately kind of get tuned in to the music. So that alone is absolutely genius. And then also, again, another reason why, which I don't think he touched on why it's so big and popular and number one and why people are resonating so much with it is because no matter where you are from these days, no matter like kind of your upbringing, you have probably been exposed to hip hop and rap and like kind of that genre and feel of music. So like not only did you strictly come up on country and rock, rock and like whatever, everybody's just blended. Everybody has a mix of music and interests that they have all kind of been exposed to and, and like and touched on so like when you hear these mashups of genres we're already tuned in for it and ready for it because like we're not strictly one genre anymore i know a bunch of country dudes that listen to rap i know a lot of rap dudes that listen to rock and country and folk and like vice versa like there is kind of like this blurring of barriers these days so like when you get a crossover that can like tap in so well into both elements we're already ready for it and we already listened to it. Like we will have playlists that kind of go through that same snap neck, breakneck, like pace of like genres and styles. And you like, you wouldn't even think that people are so in tune with all those kinds of music, but we are. So it's just like, we're ready for it. And he's just perfectly tapped into that. Just tapped in, just tapped into having fun. Having a good time when you're out and about, no matter what genre you like, no matter your upbringing, it is a song that taps into that primal feel and that everybody has is that they just want to have a good time and sing along to some good, fun music. And like he delivers. So I'm not surprised that it's such smash it. <laughs> 